you know, usually when someone asks me that question, there's a context. And that helps me decide how I'm going to explain it. So this is a little bit more difficult. But, you know, in short, when I share the gospel with people, particularly in Turkey, but also even in America now, it's getting so secular. I start with God, he created us and he created us to be good. But we fell, we sinned, and we are sinners. And, uh, and of course, you know, when we're sharing with people, it is uh, really good to make sure they understand you because the gospel has to be comprehended to be believed. And so as I share with people, I try to explain what it means to be a sinner, what it means that we broke God's law, that he is righteous and a righteous judge. And so I like to take them back to the fall and explain the fall of Adam and Eve. And some people like to protest and be like, but I'm actually a good person and I haven't broke God's law. And uh, we've all seen enough Ray Comfort to know that that's pretty easy to to answer. Uh, it's so simple to show people that they are actually lawbreakers and that we have all broken God's law and we deserve his wrath and judgment, his perfect and holy judgment. And, you know, I explained to people in Turkey, I say, you know, our biggest problem and is that God is righteous and he's good. And for, for us, that is really bad news. And they're like, well, why is that? Can't God just forgive us? And I'm like, no, he can't just forgive us. He's righteous. He's just. God cannot break his holy law. And he's infinite and he's good. And so if he's infinite and he's good, then that means he has to punish us. And if he has to punish us, we'd actually end up deserving an infinite punishment, which is why hell is forever. That's why it never ends. Because we can't, as finite creatures, pay for our sins. It'll take eternity to do it. And explaining that to people, sometimes they get it. You know, I, I give a an analogy I heard somewhere that's really helpful and it, it's been really good for sharing the gospel. I love using some of these, but I'll say to people in Turkey, I'll be like, hey, if I punch you right now, what will the police do? And they're like, oh, nothing, who cares? You know, like nothing. And I'm like, okay, but what if I run up and try to punch President Erdogan? And they're like, dude, you'll die before you get even close to him. They'll like shoot you dead on the stairs. <laughs> and I'm like, exactly, why is that? And they're like, well, because he's the president. He has more power. He has more authority. He's more important. I'm like, exactly. And so when you sin against a perfect, holy God, that's why your punishment is so severe. Because he's perfect. He's holy. He's more than just a president. Okay, The person you sin against, who it is, matters. And because God is the divine judge who sees all things, everything you ever thought, everything you've ever done, he sees it all. We're guilty of punishment for everything we've ever done from him. And that's where it gets really beautiful in explaining the gospel, because then they start to realize, well, then we're toast. Um, especially Muslims, you know, in Turkey, you know, I haven't seen a lot of them believe the gospel, but I've seen quite a few understand it. And it's really cool when it clicks. And they're like, well, that means everyone's going to hell. And I'm like, yeah, now you're understanding. Everybody's going to hell. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, see, that's why the gospel is the most important thing in Christianity. Who God is and what he has done in Jesus Christ is the most important thing in Christianity. And so what's so beautiful is that that infinite punishment that we deserve 
can only be taken and satisfied by an infinite being. And we know there's only one infinite being. And he subsists in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he, God the Father, sent his Son, the second person of the Trinity, infinite in glory, to take on human flesh, to become a man like us, to be our brother, in order to take that infinite punishment from God the Father. So we have God the Father pouring out that infinite punishment on God the Son in our place as a substitute for us. He takes our punishment. And so then that gets us out of hell. That's what gets us out of hell is when we have faith in that work, when we trust in Christ and his atoning work. That gets us out of hell. But that still doesn't get us into being righteous. That gets us out of being unrighteous. But what's amazing is that Jesus not only died on the cross and took our unrighteousness and God's wrath and took our sins and took our hell, but he rose from the dead and he, as a man, became perfectly righteous and he bought our righteousness as well. So now not only was our sin imputed onto Christ so that he could take our punishment from God the Father. But now his righteousness that he purchased when he rose from the dead is imputed to us, which means that not only are we not going to hell, but we can now be in the presence of God as perfectly righteous in his sight by the blood of Jesus, covered by the blood of the Lamb, we can be in the presence of God forever with him in the new heavens and the new earth. And that, in short, is the gospel.